that was my dream, and it wasn't just to become a real estate agent, it was to become the best real estate agent that ever lived. So I followed my passion, and you know what? They, there's a saying out there that says 74%, 74% of Americans out there don't like their jobs. They don't like what they do. So you can imagine how blessed I felt that I was able to find that at a very young age. So when people ask me, how do I work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, every single day, how am I able to do it and have this energy and have a smile on my face? I say, because every single call that I take, every listing appointment that I go on, every deal that I close, brings me one step closer to my goal. It brings me one step closer to making my dreams become a reality. So when you're thinking about what you have to do, you have to dig deep down and ask yourself, who do you want to become? And then visualize how you're going to get there. My second rule that I have is that you have to learn your business. All too often, everybody thinks they're going to become a million dollar agent right away. All too often, people think they're going to get everything right away, that they're not going to have to work for it. You know, Will Smith said it best. He said, talent you have naturally, but skill is only developed by working hours and hours and hours and hours at developing your craft. We live in an instant gratification society and everybody wants instant results. But I'll tell you right now, there's no such thing. You gotta put in the work. And when I got into business, I didn't care about putting in the work. I would learn everything I could. I would read every article I could. I would read every blog, because there's no like podcast or anything like that at that time. I would pick up the newspaper. I would Google real estate and try to figure it out. It was like hungry, hungry, hippo, trying to figure out all the information I could. And I remember when I was young, I'd have nothing on my calendar. And at 6 p.m. at night, I'd watch my father pick up the phone and pound the phone and, and make calls. And I would say, why are you asking that? Why'd you do that? How'd you negotiate that way? And I sat there till 11 o'clock at night, and I would just sit there and listen. And I didn't care about getting sales. I cared about becoming successful. So when I wanted to take my company downtown, and I didn't know anything about a city, I didn't know that there was a Gold Coast or River North or Shreveville, I didn't know those neighborhoods existed. I came down here with a paper map, and I'd walk the neighborhoods, and I'd draw up the neighborhood boundaries, and I'd walk into buildings, I'd say, is this a sale or is this a rental? And they said this was a rental building, I crossed off my list. Because I said if I was going to make it, I was going to make it in sales, I wasn't going to make it in rentals. And if it was a sales building, I'd grill that doorman, try to find out every information I could, and I'd go on from there. And I'll tell you, if you become the expert, people will want to go to you. And when COVID hit, and everybody was talking about how they got to spend a lot of time with their families and friends, and they've never been slower, I've never been busier in my life. Because everybody was calling me. Everybody wanted to know information. Everybody wanted to know what's going to happen in the market. Because I established myself as an expert. And if you think it's going to happen overnight, you're wrong. You have to know that Rome wasn't built overnight, and neither is going to be your business. So you got to put in the work, you got to put in the hours, and you got to understand the business. My next rule is that you have to have a routine. Each and every day is different, and that's what's so great about this business. But if you don't have the right mindset, if you don't have the right routine, then you're never going to go anywhere. I'll tell you, I do the same exact thing every single day. I wake up at the same time and I go to bed at the same time. I wake up super early and I go to bed super late. I wake up, take a piss, brush my teeth, have a protein shake, I go to the gym, and then that way, the hardest part of my day is done. And then I follow up, I prospect, and I tackle everything else that comes to me. My assistants, every Monday they have a certain task, every Tuesday they have a certain task, every Wednesday they have a certain task, etc. Because what happens to people is you start doing a bunch of different things and you forget about that original thing you're supposed to be doing and then next thing you know, it's done, it's gone. You forgot to do it. I'm so ingrained with routine that if I go on vacation, I wake up at the same time because I'm scared that I may enjoy sleeping in. I can't do anything until I get done with my morning routines. And I ask, you know, when people talk about how we, why I hold accountability towards my agents, you know, I count days off. So if you take a day off, of course a day is a day off. But if you take off before 6.30 at night, that's considered a day off. So if you go to dinner at 6.15, that's a half day, okay? And on Saturdays or Sundays, if you take off before 4 p.m., that's a half day. So if you go to your kid's soccer game at 3.30, it adds up. And I compare it to dieting, right? People ask, I don't know how I gain weight. I'm like, well, let's dissect your diet, right? A little mayonnaise here, a little white bread there, some pizza. Next thing you know, you gain weight. I'm like, well, of course you're fat. You, you know, you've been eating like shit the last two weeks, okay? But it's the same thing, whereas at the end of the year, you ask me, well, why am I sales so bad? I say, of course your sales are bad. You took 50 days off this year. What the fuck do you think is going to happen? You know? But we don't hold each other accountable. And that's why I count it on the board. Because the better routine you have, the more successful your business will be. The next uh, rule I have is that you got to ignore the haters. Everybody's going to tell you your whole life that you're never going to mount to everything. Everybody's going to tell you your whole life you can't do something. People are always going to hate on you. I remember when I was in sixth grade, I was so excited because they announced a Spanish class. It was the first time they're ever doing it. I was excited. I was like, man, I, I, my dream was always to learn a second language at a young age. 
And out of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids, only two people weren't allowed to take a class, and I was one of the two. And I remember how mad I was when I sat down with my teacher, and she looked at me in the face, and she said, you know what, you're just not smart enough to take it. There's just not enough room, there's two spots empty. You have to sit in the lunchroom with the lunch ladies while they make lunch, they're gonna watch you, maybe do some homework. And that's a true story. And I remember the way I felt. I didn't feel I wasn't smart enough, even though my teacher told me I wasn't. I knew that I was gonna do something, I was gonna let that hold me down. And I remember when I was first starting in the business, you know, I was handing out business cards in front of Starbucks because I figured if you can afford a $3.50 cup of coffee, you can afford to buy a place. Or I was sitting in front of Home Depot handing out business cards because I figured if you were going to sit there and remodel your house, maybe you can afford to, you know, sell your place or whatever. And all my friends would make fun of me and say, you went to college, what are you handing out business cards? I didn't care. Or when I started doing video, you can go back on my YouTube page. You can look at it, see the very first video I ever posted. It was me sitting in a sweater talking about the market. And everybody made fun of me, like, who's going to do video? Nobody's going to be doing video. Then I hired a production company and they followed me around and we did some cool shit. I remember I'd go to the car sales awards and I'd see other people and say, you know, who do you think you are? Video is so stupid, it's dumb, blah, blah, blah. Now look at everybody doing TikToks, Instagram reels, how popular it is. Imagine if I would listen to the haters then. I remember when I went to Martini Ranch, which is now a vet. It was a guaranteed rate holiday networking event kind of like this. And networking events are always kind of nerve wracking, right? You gotta put yourself out there, try to talk to people, kind of don't know what to do. And I remember I saw five of the biggest agents in the city sitting there in the corner. And I walked up to them, I worked up some courage and said, hey guys, what are you guys doing for business? You know, and they were like, ah, oh, you know, taking out bus board, or bu bus bench ads, and billboards, and CS Magazine, et cetera. And they are like, what are you doing? I said, well, I invested my entire life savings in a company called Zillow. They're like, what's a Zillow? I said, Zillow, it's an internet site. I said, you know, people go online, they search for homes, properties come up, if it's in my zip code, I get the lead. They literally said to me, said, who's gonna go online to look for homes? You know, they started laughing at me. And I thought to myself, fuck man, well, you guys gotta remember, this is 2010, okay? Half the people in the room had uh, flip phones, okay? People weren't going online. So as I drove back home, I remember thinking to myself, because I lived in the suburbs, I couldn't afford to live in the city, I'm like, fuck these people, I'm not gonna listen to them. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna not believe that people are gonna search on the home, on online for homes at some point. And I remember when I came downtown and I'd have to go on appointments and other realtors would look at me right in front of my clients and say, hey, what company do you work for? I say, I work for AmeriCorp. They say, well, where's that uh, company located? I say, it's on 63rd Street. And they look at my client right from that face and say, well, hey, this is the Gold Coast. You gotta work with somebody local. And I didn't let that bring me down. Fuck that at properties agent, okay? Welcome. <laughs> I kept moving forward. And I knew I was a winner. And I didn't take in what they had, uh, the haters thought about me. I believed in myself. And my next rule is that success equals sacrifice. All too often, everybody wants something and they don't want to give anything up. Nowadays, we live in this society where everybody's talking about the balance, right? It's all about that balance, man, right? Word Isn't that what everybody says nowadays? Balance is a millennial word, okay? Balance. It's not real. If you want to be successful, you're going to have to give it all up. You're going to have to give uh, success. Uh, you're going to have to give up giving uh, seeing with your family. You're going to have to sacrifice going out with your friends. You're going to have to sacrifice pretty much everything. Because I'll tell you right now, if you're not willing to sacrifice it, somebody else will. I'll, I'll sacrifice pretty much everything to win. I will. And I'll tell you, it, it's it's... You gotta think to yourself that if you're not willing to give it up, then you can't sit there and think that you're gonna have the balance. And a lot of people out there are thinking to themselves, well guess what, when you're on your deathbed, you're gonna wish that you spent more time with your family, or you spent more time with your friends, or you spent more time watching kids grow up, or whatever it was. I'll tell you right now, you're probably right. And I'm, I'm sure that I'm not dumb enough right now to tell you that I'm not gonna regret all that. But I can also tell you that I don't wanna be on my deathbed and regret the fact that I can say, well, hey, when I was younger, I could have made a name for myself. When I was younger, I could have built my business. When I was younger, I could have built a legacy. When I was younger, I could have left more money for my family. So you're not always gonna have it. You can't be the best dad in the world, and you can't be the best, most successful person at the same time. You're gonna have to choose which one you wanna be, because life is meant for work, it's not for pleasure. That's right. And my last point, guys, is don't ever give up. You can't ever give up. You know, this business is gonna beat you down to your knees and it's gonna make you wanna quit every single day. I remember when I got started in the business, I was 21 years old, fresh out of college, big man on campus, thought I was cool, thought I was gonna be making millions of dollars my first year, and there I was. I started working at a company called Century 21 Protein. And the reason I had to work there is my old man wouldn't let me work for his company up front. And I thought I was gonna be making millions of dollars there, and then of course I chose the wrong company because the owner of the company used to be an old client of my father's so I didn't get a desk, I was the only person in there that didn't get a desk, so I'd get there early, I'd walk around trying to find my place where I'm gonna sit, and I'd open up my laptop and I didn't have anything to do. I didn't know what to do, it's one of those jobs where you just don't know what's gonna happen. So 
you know, I kept going after it and it wasn't really working out that much for me and I was dating this girl at the time who dumped me and I thought I was gonna marry this chick and now I'm heartbroken, living at home and I'm watching all my friends make hundreds of thousands of dollars and people tell me I'm never gonna mount anything and it kinda, kinda gets to you. And I remember I go home that night and I had this, this old clipboard. It's like one of those old 1950s clipboards. It's one of those brown ones with a little silver tag at the top, you know? And I come home and I throw that thing away and I cry myself to sleep and I quit, I'm done with this business, I'm, I'm never gonna do it again. And I wake up and on the table and my mom had that clipboard with a little note like this is expensive. I'm like, it's fucking 50 cents. Or, you know, it's like, you know, like we're, we, you know, you gotta, you know, keep moving forward, etc. I remember at, at that period of my life, it's four years now into the business and I've made $17,000 total my first four years. And it was the first time in my life where I really felt defeated. It was the first time in my life where I really thought to myself, well, maybe I will never amount to anything. Maybe I will just be a loser like everybody said I was always going to be. And I was trying not to let myself down and I kept moving forward and I thought to myself, well, I can't be a quitter. And when I was 25 years old, I hit a tipping point in my life. I remember I was at a family wedding. And there was my mom and dad on the dance floor dancing away. And I remember looking at my girlfriend at the time, it's now my wife, Nicole, and I said, man, I don't know how my mom has so much energy. I don't know how she does it. It's midnight here, I'm tired, and there she is out there dancing. And I remember my parents came up to me and they said, hey, listen, we're gonna give you guys the hotel room because uh, you know air conditioning broke at the hotel. We don't want to sleep in the heat, so you guys can have this. So I was like, great, we're going to take this. So me and my girlfriend at the time, my brother and his wife at the time took the hotel room, and I remember we went to bed, and around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call. And it was my dad, my dad kept calling. I said, what do you want? He said, mom's dead. I said, what do you mean, mom's dead? I just saw mom a couple hours ago on the dance floor. He's like, mom went to bed and didn't wake up. She's dead. I said, it's not possible. He said, get home. So there I was racing home, and I remember as I came around the bend, and I was pulling up to my house, I saw in the distance a line of cop cars, and my entire life flashed before my eyes. I had a moment in my life. And it was like a machine inside of me was clicking and something was off gear and all of a sudden all the gears aligned and everything moved smoothly and everything kind of came into fruition. And for me at that moment, I remember what my mom used to always tell me, which is when it hits, it hits, and you get what you put into life. And it's much like Rocky Balboa says, guys, it's not how hard you can hit, it's how hard you can get hit and move forward. It's not how much, or it's how much you can take and keep moving forward. And that's how winning is done in this life, guys. You gotta believe in yourself. You gotta keep moving forward. And if you listen to these rules, you can go from making $17,000 in four years to selling $300 million in one year. I'm Matt Larry, so thank you guys. Yeah.